Everyone, this is Three Questions with Deontay Torres. How about that music, eh? Hey, I like it. <laughs> All right, so Deontay is actually, this is, uh, you are the first student to ever be on my podcast. And uh, we had a special connection. We love uh, basketball. We're big basketball shoes. And uh, yes. the Bucks just won. So when we're recording this, they're actually holding the parade right now. So, uh, yes. Deontay, for being the first student on my podcast, shout out. <laughs> Got a little Bucks thing. So, it's, it's I awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome to have you. And actually, Deontay, uh, we connected uh, a, a little while ago, and um, we were talking about basketball shoes, and you just sent me the, the, the nicest email, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's do a podcast. So, I'm, like, pumped to have you. So, um, we're, we're just doing three questions, and then we're going to do a longer podcast after. And so, I'm really pumped just to sit and talk to you, and we'll see where the conversation goes. But... Uh, sure. I know you have incredible teachers there in West, West Allis, just outside of uh, Milwaukee. So when you think of like a teacher who inspired you, uh, like who's one of the first people that comes to your mind? And I know you told me before you're going to have trouble picking because there's so many. Um, but like who's one that, you know, inspired you and why? I have to say Miss Bitters. So she was my crew teacher at Docky, at Docky Pot Project Based Learning High School. We're different now. But um she was my crew teacher my first year there. And then we really didn't have a relationship in the beginning because I just only seen her for 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And I knew who she was and I knew like she had an effect on students and I always heard her name buzzing around the school, but I never really thought to reach out and try to build my own connection. But my second year during the pandemic, I had her every day. Mm -hmm. Like three times a day, I think, because I was taking a lot of English credits because I finished everything else. So I was just stacking up on English credits. And um, she she honestly changed my life. She gave me a new perspective on who I was as a person as well as my ability. She helped me believe in myself because I, I came back to a to a crossroads. Like I was I was down and then I, I got that confidence back mm -hmm. within my ability. And then I was down again. I want to credit that to the pandemic, sadly, but mm -hmm. having her there and throughout that time was amazing because she just pushed me every day. She, it wasn't even like she was a teacher. It was more like she was like a mentor. And she knew I had the ability when it came to my school elastic, you know, things I had to do, whether it's classwork, homework, projects, or, mm -hmm. you know, speaking on behalf of my school, it was, it was honestly like, she tended to the things that I really wanted to work on to push me to be better in life. She, she allowed me to be free in my academics because she understood my ability. And that's one of the, that's one of the things that I, I love her dearly for, because I've had a lot of teachers where, um, when I feel like, and I know that I'm two weeks ahead and they want me to work two weeks behind. And it's like, that never worked for me. And it always, it always made me fail and perform worse than I actually would be performing if I was allowed to work at my pace. So her giving me freedom within the classroom and, and tending to my, to my life outside of school really, really changed my life. So she's definitely the one I have to speak of for sure. And and that when you when you're talking about that, I think like and this is one of the reasons I was so excited to have you is you know talking about a student because a lot of times we as educators say like oh relationships are so important, and I've yeah. I've actually had some pushback saying like oh no it's like it's all about academics and things like that I'm like it's not we're not ignoring academics it's just you have to start with that relationship and it obviously pushes you to be so much better so what sorry what was the teacher's name? Bitters Kaylee Bitters. I actually think I actually know Kaylee Bitters. I actually yeah, know. I'm pretty nice. sure I know that name. So we're gonna do this. Shout out Kaylee Bitters. Shout out Kaylee. Yeah. I love it. So um, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump to the next question. And so uh, usually when I ask, you know, when I do this podcast, I do it with educators, and we talk about. And a lot of times they actually refer to uh, principal superintendents that they worked with. But you know, you're you just you know you just finished school. Um, so yeah. you're going to only talk about administrators that, you know, you, you connected with. And I think for me, when I was a principal, uh, someone said to me, 
like, oh, that's, you know, principal, that must be hard because you don't get to connect with kids. And I'm like, I was with students all the time. Like I would go in classrooms, yeah. I'd hang out, you know, I'd be in the hallway. So I know there's some really great administrators, you know, some at central office, some maybe in your own school. So who is like one administrator that like sticks out to you and why? I w Before I say who is the one, I do want to give a shout out. I have to give a shout out to Mr. Gales as well as Mr. Ruzan. Like our two principals at Nike are some of the best of the best. Like they're amazing. They're at the top of the top because they understand the, the, uh, the human side of education. Mm -hmm and not just the, the analytical side and your test scores and your grades. They understand the person behind the books. So I have to shout out them. But in this case, I would have to say Mr. Rice. He was my counselor actually at, uh, at West Dallas Central. Mm -hmm. And he's, I, in my speech, I said he's the best counselor money can't buy because <laughs> he wants nothing in return for the things that he, he gives. Right. Like, and those things include his time, attention, his his effort and his will to work towards your dreams and your goals with you and on his own outside of school when he doesn't have to when he can take that time to spend it with his family for us specifically so um i started the black student union well i was a part of starting it i was mm -hmm. one, of, one of two uh founding students it was as alongside mr rice who started that and uh Hopefully soon, yeah, yeah, in a couple of days here, we'll have start having meetings about uh, the curriculum. So now we're into implementing a curriculum for black students mm -hmm. as well as anybody else, but mainly for us to give us some representation in our curriculum that we're learning every day. And I, it wouldn't have been done without Mr. Rice. He's amazing. And I had that dream going in, and I didn't have a specific goal that I wanted to achieve. I just knew that I wanted to, to make history and I wanted to leave an impact and leave my mark on every school that I touched. And he allowed me to do that at Central and I appreciate him so much for it. He took the time to listen. And that's the biggest thing. It's always the simple things that go along with. And he just took the time to listen. And you know, you say like the the best money, you know, or like, you know, counselor, they don't, they don't get anything out of it. But um, I, I think one of the things that I've said about like really great administrators is that their work yeah. is about lifting and elevating other people. Like you actually That's aren't effective if it's just if it's just about you, right? And I think sometimes, you know, people, you know, get in their ego ego's way and it's like they want the credit and stuff like that. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, um, one of the things that he is so grateful for is seeing the success and the work, you know, that you're doing. So yeah. like that's you know Greedily, I, I, when I help people, I want to see them succeed. I want to see them, you know, benefit. I'm sure it's the same way. And obviously, what I love about what you shared is that when you're um, when you're gone from school, when you're no longer there, your fingerprints yeah. as a student and shout out to your whole school community will be there forever. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this: you're not going to get credit for it ten years from now, but it still be there, right? So now I got I got my credit, my name on it, my name's I had <laughs> you even better, you even better. So okay, so what's what's it? You got, give me all the administrators you you mentioned because we're gonna we gotta hit the horn. Shout out, oh shout shout out, Mr. Gills for for sure. Got to shout out, Mr. Gills, Mr. Buzan. <laughs> got to give a shout out to Mr. Buzan and lastly, Mr. Rice. Three of the greatest I've ever met. Yeah, 100%. and hey, we're, I'm gonna give like a, an extra shout out to Deidre Rainbow. Deidre, who's, can't forget Deidre. Yeah, because she's uh she's. She's here uh, on a summer, and so we could have like this podcast set up. And she's, I know, and she, Man. I'll tell you, she hypes you up. She hypes you up. <laughs> like she, she tells me, like she told me how great you were, and like Man, she, I she actually you. asked me. She's like, hey, we got some students who are talking about podcasting. Can you take some time with them? I'm like, yeah, like in a second. And it was just, and it was like, I feel bad because I was like, this is way better for me than the students. Like I, I'm loving this, so it was awesome. So you know, shout out to Deidre as well. Shout out to Deidre for sure. Do it. All right. So, okay, you gotta you gotta get one of these, right? Like this. this yeah, little, thousand percent. Just even that one horn is the best. Okay, so we're recording this in July. Uh, it's probably not going to actually be. Uh, people are probably watching, listening uh, in September, and there's a lot of new teachers coming into the profession. There's a lot of people just starting their career. And usually what I ask is, you know, teachers that have been in the profession for a while, you know, what advice would you give yourself, right? But but since you've never taught and I would, you know, new teachers coming in, you know, coming into a school building, maybe starting their career, what advice would you give for them as they're starting off their career? 
I think this is really is really really simple, but the message behind it is is vast, and it's just a few words. A classroom is made up of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a principal one time. He always came in and he, and he said that. He always just said a classroom is made up of individuals that come together to form a collective. And you have to approach each student individually. You have to have some kind of relationship, whether it's uh, a handshake that you guys come up with or a mantra, a saying, mm -hmm. um, whether it's you take the extra mile and, and try to dive into the personal personal challenges and, and, and obstacles that they face in their everyday life outside of school and get to understand why certain students perform better and others don't. Everyone's, everyone's life is different and mm -hmm. life doesn't stop once we leave school. And when you understand that, you understand that, like you said, we're not, we're not pushing academics to the side or discrediting mm -hmm discrediting academics or taking any way, anything away from it. But we are acknowledging the human side. That's what I always, I, the beautiful human side. It's the human interaction that matters. And once you establish that, your students are gonna love you. And when your students love and actually feel as if that they are loved, they'll, want, they'll run through a brick wall. And when it comes to school, that's having great SAT scores or everyone passing the final exam, just whatever whatever achievement you want to have academically, as long as you establish a human interaction and relationship with every single student, it mm -hmm. can't be one less, it won't work. It has to be everyone. Like I said before, a classroom is made up of individuals. So you just have to establish the human side of things and the academics will follow, I promise you. I'm a living testimony to that. Every teacher that I had that established that human side I've, I've passed their classes and with flying colors and mm. it's, it's always been like that, whether it's Mr. D in science, Miss Bitters in English, um, Miss Hanson in social studies, it's always happened because they took the extra time to get to know me and who was behind the desk. So, so that's you, all I got. I know you're going to, I know you're going to appreciate what I share because that advice is so powerful. Um, one of the things, it's amazing that you shared it because of uh, when I was watching the finals the other night, when the Bucks won, yeah. right? Shout out Bucks! Shout out the Bucks! Right? NBA champs! Yeah, so I, can't, I can't. I can't remember if I was. It was the 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 on the radio the the day after or the or the night of when they won, and someone said like basically their mantra and the coaching job was they their focus was every player has to be a star at in their role, like whatever that role. Yeah. Is, is going to be and that's even that's including people who don't necessarily play in the games right what they do and it's like uh, yeah, Bill Jackson it's a, a coach right but it is actually as you as you said it's about developing the individual so you can come together and build something you know together you yes. know as a team and how powerful that is and just kind of thinking about how um, even and thinking something about for something with new teachers uh, they actually shared like one of the strategies that they did was a, one of the coaches would spend 30 minutes, and I know teachers don't have that time, but they would spend 30 minutes each day with with an individual player and work on the things that they were working on to help them improve, right? So like a lot of people, when they think of team sports, they think of like all coming together, but it was like, hey, how do we help each individual to be a star in their role so that we can do something together? We actually have a goal as a community. And it was like, like obviously you it's kind of interesting to listen to your advice on that because of how effective that is in a classroom and literally it was the exact same advice for how the bucks won the championship right it was just it was just interesting and in how the parallels of those two hey that's a great great comparison or analogy however you want to say it that's that's a great comparison I'm telling you, Deontay, if That's anyone listens to this podcast, I can bring basketball in, <laughs> into it. Hey, <laughs> hey that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Deontay, I am so looking forward to like talking with you more. Uh, and anyone listening, you're going to see um, the longer podcast. Uh, you're going to be able to listen to it uh, coming in the future. But Deontay, seriously, thanks for uh, – I know that, you know, when I was, uh, you know, just leaving school and uh, – you know, to think about spending a July day talking to an educator on a podcast <laughs> in my own time, I probably would be like, no way. So I got a shout out to you for doing that. So thank you, thank do you, one, thank you. one special one.
for Deontay. <laughs> hey, thanks for thanks for everyone for listening, and uh, Deontay, thanks for your time. Okay, everyone, have a good day. Have a good day. Take care, everybody.